I wish I had learned this truth many years ago. Be thankful for the days, good and bad. All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And as always, today I have an amazing warrior guest to introduce to you today. But first, let us talk about why we're here. Success is a journey, it's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world, and in each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life. Entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause, they have a unique value, and a vision that goes generations into the future and today's guest is absolutely no exception. Daniel Johnston is an incredible warrior. He's a 21-year survivor of skeletal decapitation. Just incredible. At 20 years of age, Dan was involved in a horrific auto accident while traveling with a friend, suffering skeletal decapitation, traumatic brain injury, broken ribs, and lacerated lungs his prognosis for survival was dim. After being in a coma for over 30 days, Dave Dan began his long warrior journey of survival and now significance. Since that life-changing event, Dan has worked in his family business in the solar industry, and today he has a vision to launch a one-of-a-kind assisted living and age-reversing wellness center that will help to fund his future and his company. The company is Yahweh, or Y-H-W-H Dynamics, love that name, a biomimicry inventing company that analyzes other industries to make them more efficient with higher performance. Dan's vision is to infuse biomimicry into SpaceX, Starship, and other products, maybe getting Elon Musk's attention, and personally... Yeah, and personally, his vision is to relieve and retire his parents from his care and move his friend and sister Lily from Kenya to Woodstown, New Jersey, where he's currently living today. So, Daniel Johnston, welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. Yeah, it's an honor to be here, David, and I... uh... I'm grateful you invited me on. It's a pleasure. I am very much looking forward to it. So how are things in Woodstown, New Jersey today? Is it uh, nice there? Is it crazy there? What's going on? Today, it's sunny, blue skies, so we'll take that. And it's about 65, so pretty nice day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, compared to the norm, you know, we're we're experiencing here in Dallas unseasonably warm weather. It was 93 yesterday, so uh, it's uh, starting to get hot. It's not, uh, I'd rather have it be 65 than 93 personally, but I'll take it. Uh, you know, you, we can't change the weather. Well, let's do this. I really want to make sure we have enough time for, to hear your story, to hear, um, how you got to where you are today. So let's do this. Let's take a quick break for the audio audience. We're here a little snippet of It's Not the Getting There by Ricky Jean Wright, our theme song. And we'll come back. And when we do, Daniel, I want to hear about how you got from where you started to where you are today. But the miles become the teacher While the student learns real slow Traveling blind most of the time Wherever you go It's not the getting there It's the journey Every day It's not a race to see All right, we are back. And Daniel, can't wait told the audience a little bit about your story there in the introduction, but I know there's a lot I don't know. 
and a lot of color that you can share in the whole process. So tell us, how did you get from where you started to where we are today? Well, I was uh, a wild child in the first half of my uh, existence, but I was able-bodied, uh, and now I can't be so wild. Uh, but uh, I was working as a auto collision estimator for uh, New Car Chevrolet in Delaware, uh, just writing down uh, parts needed for uh, vehicles that come in smashed up. And, you know, I was doing that for probably a year before my accident. And I was uh, coming home from that uh, late one night um, from the job to come home. And my friend was uh, going to pick me up and take me to uh, a bar up in North Jersey where my cousin was uh, recording and playing music. So we took a ride up there and just hung out for might have even only been a half an hour so we're just maybe had two drinks nothing crazy or anything like that there was uh apparently some sort of uh incident at my friend's house where something happened that i still don't know to this day and he had to rush you know kind of rush us out and get back home so there was a little bit of an urgency uh, there. So he was speeding and, you know, kind of reckless. And there apparently was an altercation on the road with another vehicle that sent us off the road, hmm. uh, skidding like 90 feet, uh, all four tires just skidding 90 feet and hitting an off ramp sign um you know the exit signs mm -hmm. and the car that we were in was a um volkswagen jetta which uh the year was like a 99 and that model had very narrow uh wheelbase so the it was kind of like a roller skate in a way and um hit, believe it or not the tires were actually perfectly spaced between the um, sign to where when we hit the sign, it punctured both front tires. Um, so they were digging in the ground. And when we hit the sign, my um, I didn't have my seatbelt on. My head hit the roof of the car, which pushed my head straight down, causing a crushing, um, a crushing compression fracture at my C2. Uh, which is also known as the hangman vertebra because that is the vertebra that breaks when you're hung. Um, but the only reason I didn't die from that was because of the um, compression fracture. The um, vertebra exploded outward. So the only thing that was holding my neck on or my head on my body was my muscles and tendons and Wow. Spinal cord, there was no bone there. That's why it's um, skeletal decapitation. Um, and this is my trade of thought here. Um, so, as far as oh, yeah, okay, I yeah, I'll, don't don't lose your thought, but you know the skeletal that was one of the areas that was a, a list. A decapitation sounds pretty severe but like you say i mean it obviously is severe though even the way it occurred but you still have your body with you so to speak yeah yeah and when the car hit the uh sign it dug in the front wheels into the uh dirt and gravel of the you know off the road and then started to turn to the left and begin to barrel roll um you know, in a circle, and that having that inertia was making my head like a pendulum, just stretching my spinal cord. Oh, wow, flip! Yeah, so, um, it ended up ejecting me out of the passenger window and then proceeding to roll over my chest. Oh, wow. um, thank 
Yeah, thankfully my head was above the windshield or that I wouldn't be here speaking to you. Um, and uh, came to a rest, thankfully, off of me mm -hmm. and threw my friend into the woods like 50 feet. Uh, wow. And they were, yeah, they were having trouble finding him, actually. They had to use infrared uh, technology to find his heat signature in the woods because it was like 2 a.m. And um, funny part of the story is, well, not funny, but coincidental. Our identities got switched at the accident because mm -hmm. all of our stuff was just thrown around and they were basing the diagnosis, the doctors, off of my friend's diagnosis of not having oxygen for a while. So all the doctors at the hospital were basically giving my parents no hope whatsoever uh, of any kind of recovery. They're basically saying, you need to pull the plug and, you know, donate his organs. And, you know, my parents just had more faith in God than anything. Tell him we, uh, you know, we had prayer vigils outside, uh, you know, all those 30 days. Uh -huh. um, and um, what else? Uh, oh, they, they couldn't, uh, they airlifted me from the scene to um, Cooper Hospital in South Jersey. And they weren't even able to stabilize me well enough to get me into the hospital. Uh, they actually had to insert chest tubes in my side on the roof of uh, Cooper Hospital uh, just because I was coding before I could even get in there. Wow. Um, so that's, a, you know, another remarkable part of it. Um, but I had, uh, you know, you listed all the injuries I had. Um, so it was, you know, grim for a long time. But, um, you know, my parents had a lot of faith and, you know, we don't believe what the doctors tell us um, <laughs> because they, you know, they screw up a lot and a lot of people don't realize it. Um, just a quick side note um, of the story. After I had been out of the coma, they thought I had spinal meningitis at one point. And, um, hey, Dad, hey. Um, they thought I had spinal meningitis and wanted me to take an experimental drug. And I didn't think I had it. My parents didn't think I had it. So we, we kind of dealt with our guts on everything um, and prayed about it and just simply refused uh, the treatment, the experimental drug. And it come to find out uh, about three or four days later, that I did not have the uh, spinal meningitis. So if I had taken that, I couldn't have very well died from that as well. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's just, <laughs> I could go on and on with survival stories. Like, uh, you know, even after the accident, I uh, had to have a revision for my uh, rods in my neck. I hit a curb in my chair. Uh, before, before God called me, I was still being reckless and doing things I wasn't supposed to do, uh, going to bars and stuff like that. But that was the that was the straw that broke the camel's back was having yeah. the uh, rods replaced. I'm like, all right, yeah, God's like, hey, okay, you're gonna listen now, you're gonna wise up. So that's when I turned around and. Started reading the Bible more, um, studying it thoroughly, and um, just inspired by the stories mm -hmm. in there. And just, you know, warriors of faith, uh, warriors of triumph. And then if God can do that back then in those stories, then what's to say he can't do that for me? So that's where right. I get a lot of my strength. 
Well, it's really, yeah, that's powerful, Daniel. And the, and the real warrior, some of the warrior lessons that you've covered just in your story is fascinating to me in terms of just, we all need expertise and we need people that understand what we don't understand. But that being said, especially for a Christian or somebody who is really connected to their source, if you, if you have trouble with the, the labeling of Christianity, um, the fact is we have that in us, right? We have that gut instinct, as you called it. I call it the spirit within us that, that has peace or lack thereof when somebody's giving us advice or telling us something. And I think if you, as a warrior, if you pay attention to that and you make your decisions, not exclusive of that information, but taking that information and then using that with your gut, you're going to end up with a better outcome. Obviously, you've had some severe trauma and things that many of us haven't dealt with. I'm amazed and and honored that you're here, number one, uh, to be on the podcast, but also just uh, how much God has carried you through this and how sometimes I think one of the other lessons is we need to disengage our zombie mind, which is the mind that we just go through the motions. You know, you were a party guy. You had this severe uh, trauma that occurred, and then you went back to being a party guy, and you went back to your old habits because that's your zombie brain. That's the, uh, if you're in uh, the Christian world, you call it your flesh, but it's basically we're inclined to not necessarily do everything that serves us the best at times. And sometimes, as I say, God has to get our attention. And obviously the second time around when your rods broke and okay, Bob. you, you, uh, yeah, he got, he got your attention, right? He got, he got, he got your attention. So once you got through that and you, you're, you're doing that and you're working, so tell me a little bit more about, does that get you to today or do we need to? Uh, no, no, def, def, definitely not. Uh, many little hiccups here and there. Uh, like um, the accident was in 2002. Uh, I had the spinal meningitis uh, incident before I had left the hospital. And um, in, I believe it was 07. I had the revision of my neck huh. uh, where they had to extract the broken rods and put new ones in. Um, and in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of rehab, a lot of recovery. Uh, like I said, like you mentioned earlier, uh, helping with the family business. Uh, my dad was a ornamental iron worker, uh, making like staircases uh -huh. and um, security enclosures for like jewelry stores, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I would always help with the design and the, uh, fa not the fabrication part, but the process to fabricate the uh, piece of equipment. And uh, I dabbled in the uh, solar business for a little while until the, uh, until the referrals uh, dried up where they weren't paying you anymore for referrals. Uh, so that I, you know, transitioned, uh, did I do from there the solar? I was doing the eBay, um, uh, okay. with my dad selling different things. And, uh, now I am, you know, working on incor uh, incorporating and franchising, uh, the assisted living, uh, age reversing, clinics um for people uh who either have similar injuries like me or uh our friends or relatives where you know they can be in a home but they work collectively together um you know to make the home functional and you're with people that 
you semi know or have uh, your relationship or something in common with. Um, so it will also be uh, in direct competition with uh, nursing homes and assisted livings, uh -huh. um, just as a franchise, because, you know, we all know old, someone old, right. and we're, you know, we're all going to end up in one of those places, one of, one of these Sure. Uh, centuries. Some of us are uh, closer to that than others, right? And I'm, I'm right. Well, I'm getting older, but uh, I'm working on that vitality of a 30 year old. Let's do this, Daniel. I think we're kind of talking about today and talking about what it is. So I want to take another quick break. I, I want to hear a little more of Ricky Jean Wright, and then we'll be back and we can talk about uh, your assisted living and some of the other stuff that uh, we, we covered in the bio. But uh, but thank you for sharing your story up to this point. I know that it's uh, been an interesting, uh, gross understatement, an interesting journey that you've been on up to this point. And I think if there's a warrior listening here that says, hey, I don't think I can get up tomorrow and do what I'm set out to do. All you have to do is listen to, to Daniel here and know that he's still moving forward. And frankly, you have attributes of a lot of other warriors. We'll talk about what you're doing now, but the fascinating thing to me is every warrior I talk to, we're all on a journey. We learn our own things. And then warriors want to take and have an impact by bringing other people along, helping them uh, get through things maybe that were a little tougher for us to get through or we had to figure out. And now all of a sudden uh, we're in a position where we've made it through and we want to be a Sherpa for those coming down the road uh, behind us or beside us. So Love that. Let's do this. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, I want to talk about this assisted living, regenerative healing type of setup and your your model there and your thoughts, a franchise that you were talking about. And then we'll talk about what kind of impact uh, also that you're hoping to have with that and other things. So let's take it here. Hear a little more of Ricky Jean Wright and our theme song, It's Not the Getting There. And we'll be back with our next segment of Warrior vs. Zombie with Daniel Johnston. How many people know your name? One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know Funny how wisdom and youth All right, Daniel. Crazy story. I mean, obviously you lived it. I'm hearing it, and I'm going, and the audience is going, my goodness, this guy's still kicking, still got a, a vision of what's going on. It's amazing. And I'm, I, I, I think that's, that's awesome. That's a great testimony. So tell me about what you're doing now, what kinds of things that are capturing your attention right now? Well, definitely um, the assisted living and wellness, um, as as well as uh, motivational speaking. Um, I had my first paid engagement um, with Blanca from the Laws of Life. Um, she hired me to speak to her entrepreneurs um, that she uh, trains and has discussions with on Tuesday huh. um, at 11 a.m., uh, which is always uh, a good pot, uh, a good show to be on. And you can always be a guest on there, too, which is great. Uh -huh. um, and, um, yeah, I... Um, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, so you're on with Blanca and uh, talking... At oh, we're... First page engagement, right? Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. The, the um, motivational speaking, as well as the um, age reversing assisted living, um, I want to make that this model where I'm at right now um, because one, it's zoned for business, uh, which makes it a lot easier. Um, it's got a great layout where it's all one floor uh, rancher with a um, wheelchair lift to the basement 
So it's pretty much ideal for that. And we will offer um, proprietary products um, that help with the aging process. And yeah, turning back the hands of time, literally, uh, with clinical um, clinical cardiovascular evidence of arteries and veins getting uh, better and re reduction in plaque. So uh, it's all science-based. And uh -huh. uh, a, lot, well, a lot of people don't know about many of the products. That we'll so when you see, yeah, so I'm curious about that. So obviously, as uh, I think I've shared, I don't know if we've shared on this podcast, I've shared on other podcasts as my vision is to live to 120 uh, with the vitality of a 30 year old, which means I'm not planning for uh, assisted living, but the age reversing part of that or the age, uh, the, the things to work with your body on what, what kind, I mean, you don't have to list everything, but what kind of technologies, modalities, things like that, are you, are you incorporating or wanting to incorporate into your model? Uh, one major, uh, technology is activating your own stem cells, um, to awaken and start to heal your body again. Uh, by the age of 35, 50% uh, have gone to sleep. And by the age of 60, I believe 90% are in the dreamland uh, <laughs> stored away. You're really so, depressing me here, Daniel, because I'm, 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 I guess I'm mostly asleep here. So, but the good news is I actually am, I think I've, I discovered that we're using similar technology, at least, at least part of it in that, in that vein. So, um, the, your stem cells are a beautiful thing. And, you know, a lot of people today have heard of, you know, in stem cell injections into joints to regenerate cartilage and, or into other parts to, you know, can correct other um, things. But, you know, basically for those that are listening to this and don't know what or have heard stem cells, it's basically the root cell that your body creates that then is, ends up being put into or turned into skin or to other uh, parts of your body can, can do a lot of things. So yeah, I'm fascinated by that, that type of, of thing as well. That X, the life wave or whatever, uh, I think is one of the products that's out there that's, uh, yeah. you know, that's patches or whatever. Yeah. Any other, any other types of things you, you, that you're, that you're looking at there besides that, that, or is that kind of the main? No, no, no. There's, um, definitely supplements, um, from a company named Amare. Um, they are the only company that is a mental health company that focuses on the gut. Hmm. Uh, which interesting uh, another um, innovative company is innovate and they are a patch company as well okay. but they are actually vitamins hmm. that are absorbed through the skin okay. um, you actually get a better absorption rate than swallowing them yeah you're there it's trans they use a transdermal technology to to have your body absorb it directly rather than going through your gut because obviously you lose some of the, your body has to metabolize or it has to be bioavailable through your digestive system. And a lot of times it doesn't make it to the blood or doesn't make it to the organs that you're trying to serve through that. So I get that as well. That's cool. Yeah. There's uh, also a uh, quantum life spring. Uh, they're yeah. a new company uh, that, has just actually uh, been introduced in North America. Only a, a few people uh, know about it. Huh. Um, that is, uh, they actually sell a quantum residence card. And it's like a credit card that you just wave. You either tap to your side of your drink and then wave over the top of the container with no lid on it and then tap the other side. Huh. And it actually quantifies your food, whatever you drink, whatever you uh, consume, um, 
and it is fascinating technology. It all works on resonance, frequency, vibration, uh, to restructure order and uh, make it easier for your body to assimilate. Fascinating. Yeah, and and frankly, again, there's you know, a lot of people might think this sounds a little wacky or wonky or or woo woo, as some people say. But the reality of it is that we're more energy than we are matter anyway. And so, sound resonance, sound waves, uh, vibrations, those kinds of things are also part of our bio microbiome in, you know, the gut health, you know, you've hit on a number of things. Anything else in that regard? Uh, yeah, there, uh, the, uh, quantum life, uh, spring has other products coming out. Um, they have a, it's, uh, I think it's cardio mist and it is, um, a spray that you spray underneath your tongue or, you know, in your mouth orally, and it's uh, nitric oxide, which okay. helps uh, open your... Uh, nitric oxide, oil. yeah, nitric oxide, where it's actually increasing the dilation of your blood vessels and stuff, right? Correct. And uh, that's another product they offer. Uh, and, oh, the, the Beamer, it's... Uh, B E M E R. Yeah, I'm familiar with that as well. Yeah. I, oh, are you? Wow. Yeah. That's impressive, David. I well, not really. I just actually run uh, I, the one of my clients and one of my endeavors uh, as a vision. I was working with a naturopathic doctor who launched a company called My Wellbeing Compass, which is an uh, entire 360 uh, focus on health and wellness and. And one of the practitioners in that, she was a, uh, used the Beamer. She's a massage therapist and a bunch of other things. She's actually also using LifeWave now and some other um, modalities and technologies to help her clients. So, so yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm a believer in looking at all possibilities. Again, I don't believe necessarily in silver bullets. I believe more that God is we are a miraculous creation and there's a lot of things in our environment um, not just the acute or horrendous things that happen in terms of us hurting ourselves but just in our daily life that work against our own body and so coming up with things to work on the other side <clears throat> that are scientifically based are worth at least evaluating and exploring and that's pretty cool well that's me oh, just oh, make, yeah go ahead uh, i was just gonna add if you just make little tweaks to your um diet to your uh supplements to you know the modalities like you're saying to just amplify uh the best results for your body to perform the way it was designed to yep and uh, like I say, we all, uh, the age th thing isn't necessarily, because again, I believe that God designed us to live to 120. I think it says that in the Bible. <clears throat> uh, and so I, I believe that uh, that's the way we are. So if we don't make it, then we've done something to keep that from ourselves. I don't believe God changed the plan or the, you know, I mean, I think that we are engineered that way. I think that we mess with the, the, the vehicle. We don't change the oil properly. You know, you can keep a car on the road for a long, 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 long time or you, you take, or, or you can have to turn it in every couple of years and get a new one because you don't maintain it. And I think that that's Interestingly enough, diet, exercise, movement, doing things, sleeping properly, hydrating properly, all the things that we can do. We don't have to buy anything. They're all available. Uh, but doing that right and avoiding toxins and other things in our environment as much as possible that we both consume, breathe, 
you know, doing as much of it's very overwhelming when you look at everything. But if you do that and then you can supplement it with things that stimulate your stem cells or, you know, supplement uh, uh, poor food choices or at least augment the food choices that we make, that we can do a lot to reverse our condition as well as keep us moving down the road you know, with hitting on all cylinders, as they say. So, so I think that's beautiful. Tell me a little bit, but, and then we're going to go to the final segment here, the land the plane segment, but I want to hear a little bit of this biomimicry thing, the, the concept of using the, again, nature, if you will, right. biological, our, our own biological, as well as biology in our world, uh, to apply to businesses. Uh, you hit on that a little bit in your intros. Is there anything you'd like to share on that before we move to the next, to the last segment? Uh, about mimicry, sure. It's, uh, it's a, it's my passion. I love that. Um, it solves problems. Um, it, it's, it, I believe it is the missing key to engineering and inventing, um, because it just, whatever it touches it always enhances it and is a reduction in waste or negative attributes to whatever you're putting it on um it's it's uh it's fascinating and it's um it's i guess you would call it my secret sauce and uh my uh my little um key to my own individual uh, brand uh, right. because I um, I want to infuse uh, what I call in my version God's fingerprint on uh, products. Uh, he has placed this ratio phi, P-H-I, not pi. Uh, and that's 1.618034 is the short number, but it goes indefinitely in both directions mm -hmm. uh, up and down and does not repeat itself um and it is found on every living thing uh it's in trees it's in plants um it's in animals uh the seahorse spiral uh the seahorse tail right is the same ratio as the spiral of the universe as well as the uh, Nautilus shell. Um, so that is uh, what I will be analyzing other companies with uh, to see what benefits they can glean from it. Awesome. Well, that's pretty exciting. You know, the thing that's most inspiring to me at the, about this, really, Daniel, is that not only you're still standing through your journey and still moving forward, but you're also looking beyond yourself and trying to figure out ways to make this world a better place and staying connected to our source, being tuned in to our vision of things is a, is an awesome thing. So if anything were possible, this is the last question, then we'll move to the next segment. If anything were possible, and by the way, I always say, my book says all things are possible. What kind of impact would you hope to have in the things that you're doing going forward? Well, uh, ultimately in the dream world, mm -hmm. that would be to gain the ears of Elon Musk. I want to inspire him to incorporate biomimicry into every aspect of his products um for one starship um i want to put a biomimicry invention on that that already has a another industry that is using the exact technology effectively uh with documented proven uh advantages um that will get starship to mars with 20% more lift and 7% less drag. Mm -hmm. So it will cut through the atmosphere and space faster um, 
just with a simple add-on that uh, can be applied after um, after the rocket is complete. So it doesn't have to be added on in the beginning stages. It can be applied externally on top of whatever is already built. Beautiful. Well, I love that vision. I love the impact. I love the possibilities that would flow from something like that. Uh, our space program over the years has always spawned in uh, the government-led space programs have spawned a lot of improvements that people don't even realize in our day-to-day -day life and impacted millions of people. So I love that. Well, let's do this. we got to take a quick break. We get into what I call the land the plane segment. And there I want you to think about while we're taking a quick break is what is it that if we take away anything from this podcast, what do you want us to take away? So we'll take here a little more of Ricky Jean Wright, and we'll be right back with Daniel Johnston and Warrior vs. Zombie. Funny how wisdom and youth are always two different games. The years flew by so fast is the common human complaint the memories in our minds turn to diamonds in our soul and by the grace of god all right daniel we go. this has been crazy good and i'm excited it's about sharing this there. discussion with our warrior versus zombie audience so as i said before the break hopefully i've given you a little time of all the stuff we've covered all the lessons that we can glean from your story and all the things that you're focused on today what one or two things do you want to make sure that we don't miss in this discussion definitely no matter what don't give up uh despite any circumstance because you never know what one conversation, one phone call, one yes from somebody will change your world and open up new doors that you never thought possible and never to give up on God, family, or yourself. Wow. I absolutely love that, and that's a perfect takeaway from your story here that a lot of people need to hear these days. It's pretty easy going through what we've gone through for a lot of people, unfortunately, to look at what they went through, the loss of business, the loss of relationships, a number of things, maybe loss of loved ones and things through the whole zombie apocalypse that I call it, or the pandemic as most people call it. Uh, and it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get depressed, but no matter what you're trying to do as a warrior moving forward, we all need to move forward and not give up. I love, love, love that. So how do we stay in touch? You're on the Be Connected platform. This will be up uh, on that channel, uh, and you'll we'll be on all the podcasting platforms and so on, Daniel. But how else do? Is there any other other way that you want us to reach out to you? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll have to send you my links. Okay. okay. You to put in the description uh you can find me on facebook uh i think it's just dad johnston j-o-h-n-s-t-o-n with a t and uh, on instagram i'm less than the number one percent dan uh, on instagram uh, and the reason i have that handle is because that's what the prognosis the doctors gave me um a after the accident if uh, they said if the traumatic brain injury doesn't kill him, uh, if the spinal cord injury doesn't kill him, his lungs will kill him because they were lacerated and I was a smoker and I should actually be on a ventilator right now. Um, but yeah, I was able to get off that as well. Um, so yeah, Beautiful. crazy journey, Dave. I... That's such a gross understatement, but I'll take it. That's amazing. Well, Daniel, it's been amazing. I think that uh, as time goes on, we'll probably come back with a triggered episode, drill down a little bit on maybe some of the technology systems 
uh, whatever. I mean, there's just so many possibilities here. So thank you for that. I appreciate you sharing with our audience. And uh, we will now land the plane, hear uh, a little more of our theme song, the outro of It's Not the Getting There. And we'll be back this Thursday for another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. It's not the getting there It's the journey every day It's not a race to see How many people know your name One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know